All right, for the second pair of ear wires, I'm going to again work with the two mil or the two inch wires that I have here. These uh, are not balled up, and I also need to clean up their ends. For one, the length is not quite the same on this, and um, they also have some pinched edges still. So I'm going to take my flush cutters. This happens to be one of my Tronix cutters. It's the model 5613. It's a razor flush cut, and I'm just going to come in, clip off the ends of those so that not only do they now match up size-wise, but I have flush ends on both sides, which is pretty important. It makes a lot less cleanup work for me in the end. Uh, I'm going to use a couple of my bale making pliers for this, and bale is B-A-I-L, not B-A-L-E. Uh, I like this particular pair to create a couple of my bends. It has a two millimeter and a, I think it's like a three millimeter. It may be like a two and a half to three and a half, but it's approximately two and three millimeters for the different noses on, on this pair of pliers. Again, I'm going to start at the very, very tip of this, and it doesn't really matter where I hold this in the nose of my pliers because it's not tapered. So ideally, and this pair is not exact, but you would have, you know, a nice straight uh, nose on these. This one has a little bit of variations, but it's a cheap tool and it works well. So I'm going to put my ply or my wire in here, and again, same concept as before. I'm going to work very, very, very close to the the pliers themselves, so that I can make certain that I have complete control of this little loop that I'm going to make. So there's my first loop. Hopefully you can see that. I'm going to do the same thing for the second one. Come back in create my loop. So now I have two small loops. Now what I'm going to do on this is I'm going to use the other side of the bale making pliers. The first one I did I used the small nose and now I'm going to use the larger one. And I'm going to put, I, for me I like to wrap my wire away from me, like I'll turn my wrist away from me as I bring my non-dominant hand up and around towards me. So I'm going to put the loop that I just created pointing up towards the small nose and so it's captured in between and I'm going to wrap around the large nose in the opposite direction of my loop that I just created. So basically I'm creating kind of like a figure eight or an S. And so what I'm going to do is just bring this around so that again I touch itself Okay, so that's what we have there for this one. This is one of my favorite ear wires. I love making this pair. They're so pretty. Uh, going to do that for the second one. Okay, so now I have my two ear wires started. And again, this is where I would hang my dangles, my head pins, whatever it is that I'm going to do. Now because I did this with bale making pliers. I don't have to worry about any tapers on the pliers. I'm actually going to come over to another bale making plier here. Okay. And I'm going to, on this one, I'm going to work on the small side. I believe that this is about a five millimeter diameter for this, this particular pair of pliers. I'm going to set this so that these sit right up against the tang. Let's see if I can see, show you here. There we go. So you can see that the little loops actually sit up against the barrel of, of the larger on, of the nose on my pliers. And I'm going to bring these ear wires down and around. And same type of thing, I'm going to bring uh, the looped part that I just created forward towards this as well. Okay, so you can see that I brought both sides so that they each match each other. And again, I do that so that I get this beautiful curve, okay? And I don't end up with really any flat spots. Uh, for a final thing that I like to do is again, take my flat nose pliers, come back in, give a little bit of a twist so that I now have my two matching ear wires like so. Let's see if I can zoom in on that just a little bit for you so you can kind of see those. Okay, so that's the second 
type of ear wire that I like to make. Alright, so the third pair of ear wire that we're going to use, I am actually going to use my ruler and I'm going to use my Sharpie. What I'm going to do is basically create a wrapped loop. So this one you have to think a little bit further ahead because your loop is no longer open and you'll either have to wrap onto that loop or if you already have your embellishments ready to go you'll have to thread them on and then create your wrapped loop for this particular earring. What I like to do is come up into my my wire just about maybe half an inch from the bald end so I'm going to measure this out on my ruler about a half inch up I'm going to use my sharpie create my little mark might as well do it for both of them since they're right here okay and that tells me where to hold my wires within my my pliers so that I can create that loop and so yeah you can see that sharpie mark on there going to come back in use my round nose pliers I'm going to put my round nose pliers now I have not removed my mark from my previous ear wires that I created when I showed you the first one so I'm actually going to use that because I kind of like that size of loop and I, I'm just gonna go ahead and line back up with the 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 mark on my pliers along with the mark on my my wire and I'm going to come in and I'm going to create a nice little loop here. Okay. So now this is what I have. And I did create a nice little angle right here. Uh, I do that usually when I do my head pins. And that way I can have a nice straight head pin that kind of comes up and out of that. I'm going to hold onto this loop with my flat nose pliers. You never want to do that with your round nose pliers or else you are going to leave like a little divot mark inside your wire and you want to avoid leaving any kind of tool marks. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is just take this bald end and basically wrap it around that longer end of my pliers. Now you can decide how organic you want to make this. Do you want it to be nice and exact where you know all of your coils line up really tightly or do you want to leave it so that it wraps up almost like a vine where it's a little bit more open uh, it's just up to you now because I'm here at the very end of this I have a hard time sometimes getting that last little bit of a wrap so I will switch over to my chain nose pliers while still holding the loop in my round nose and go ahead and finish off that wrap so in this case you can kind of see Let's see if I can get that to show up a little better. That I've left the coil open slightly, so I've left it a little bit more organic. Sometimes that makes it a little bit more difficult to get these to match up exactly. But then again, you are making handmade ear wires. If you wanted something that was stamped out and exact, you're going to go to a place like a jeweler store or Walmart and Target where they use ready-made uh, and exact head pins for each of their items. Alright, so again, I'm going to take, line up my marks on my pliers and my wire, come back around, create my little loop here, hold on to, and you can check to make sure that your, your circles are matching or your loops so that they're pretty close to the same size because sometimes things can move a little bit. So again, I'm going to hold on to that wire with my flat nose pliers and then I will come in here and begin to wrap around the rest of that ear wire and again trying to make it so that it it matches a little bit uh, with the organicness of the first one where it's a little bit more loose okay come back in coax that little head pin or that little balled up end down a little bit Okay, now you'll see that they're off slightly, but it's not, again, they are handmade. So they're not something that was made by a machine. And I can finesse those a little bit more too, just by playing with some of the tools and uh, whatever else. So at this point, I can now go ahead and make the rest of my ear wire. Um, I also want to check to make sure that my length matches up correctly and you'll see mine are actually pretty close so uh, I might have a little piece to trim off again using my flush cutters just trim off that little end there 
Okay. And the next thing I'm going to do is take either my bail making pliers, again, a dowel, your round nose pliers, whatever your heart desires. I'm going to put my head pins in there, my ear wires, bend them around again so that they come in next to each other. And you can leave this however long you want to, um, or however short, whatever you decide. And again, I'm going to take my flat nose at the very end of these, bend those up a little bit. And then for my final thing that I'm going to do is just finesse the shape of these. Like You'll see, um, well, I don't know if you can see or not on here, but there might be a little bit of uh, waviness where things aren't exactly straight because I didn't start off with super straight wires. I just cut them off of my roll. So I might use my flat nose pliers um, run it along the length of my ear wire here and by doing that I just kind of straighten everything right. out. So the last thing that I need to do is to harden up all of my ear wires. Okay, You don't want to flatten the area that actually goes into your ear because 20 gauge, 20 and 19 gauge, that's probably as thick as you want to go. So if you were to put that on your steel block and flatten that even further, you're going to make that gauge a little bit more. And like I said, unless people have been wearing heavy earrings for a long time, it's not going to be comfortable to wear. So what I'll do is I take my ear wire, I like to hold on to both the uh, wrapped end and the ear uh, insertion wire, I guess. And I'll hold on to that. I like to hold that as a handle, put the rest of it on my steel block. And the only thing that I'm going to hammer is just this forward part of the curve here on the ear wire. And I do that, so hopefully you can see where I'm talking about, to kind of strengthen and give that a little bit of springiness and that helps that ear wire to hold its shape. Okay, and it's just going to take just a couple of taps, not a whole lot. Okay, so just a little bit there. And I will go ahead and tap throughout the whole thing. Now another thing that you can do to harden your wire is rather than take a steel hammer, which is going to reshape and stretch your metal, you can actually take a um, a nylon hammer, a rawhide mat hammer, something like that, and that's also going to give your metal some more strength and become a little bit more hard. But I really do like that forged look right there on the very corners or that first part of that curve on the on the ear wire. And you can hopefully you can kind of see that it's a little bit more difficult to see, but this part here is flattened a little bit more and gives it just a nice finished look to it. And I would do that for all of my ear wires. Once these are done, if you make your ear wires in a batch or anything like that, throw them into your tumbler for a couple of hours. If you want to make certain that they stay together in pairs, use some copper wire to um, tie them together so that you don't really lose them. Now for the final thing that I do, I take my isopropyl, I can't even talk now, isopropyl alcohol, just that rubbing alcohol that you get from the stores, and I bring that in, and then I can remove that Sharpie marker off of my, my pliers, and if you happen to have anything that still has that little Sharpie mark on your ear wires, you can also use that to remove any Sharpie marks. And there's your tutorial on how to make matching ear wires.